Hey, I'm Steve Caballero. I'm a professional skateboarder, artist, and toy collector. Well, I'm working on a little project here that was presented to me from Andy Howe. I got picked as one of the artists to recreate one of the graphics that Andy drew for New Deal for an art show, 30 years of New Deal and the art behind the company. Then I picked Danny Sargent, pro skateboarder at that time. And I really liked his monkey holding the bomb. That one just caught my eye because I like monkeys. When I first did the graphic, I drew the monkey how I would draw it, you know? And then I kind of looked at that and I'm like, you know, maybe I should kind of add a little bit more of a twist that would kind of represent the art that I do and uh, something that collates with my graphics back in the day. I love challenging myself. I love taking on projects that I feel I can grow as an artist trying to attempt things that I've never done before as an artist. And just like skating, I learned a lot about failing to succeed. So I know with art, you fail a lot because you'll redraw and redraw things and it just takes a lot of time. Being a, a good skateboarder, you have to have a lot of time on the board. I've spent a lot of time with this brush and ink. What inspires me is the art from the 80s. A lot of uh, artists like Court Johnson, Jim Phillips, so I'm more of an old school style artist. I love doing stuff organically with paper, pencil, brush and ink. Can I drink coffee? Absolutely. <laughs> I've always been intrigued with art, comics, you know, cartoons, drawing stuff like Spider-Man, Batman. But it wasn't until probably around 2005 that I really wanted to dig into being an artist as a career. You know, something that I could progress at, like skating. And I just wanted to be a part of this scene that I saw a bunch of these skateboarders being a part of. Guys like Lance Mountain, Andy Howell, Mark Gonzalez. A lot of the skaters were doing these art shows, you know, and I just felt like I wanted to be a part of that. Art's awesome. It's unlimited, the possibilities of things that you can accomplish with it. That's my drive, to see how far I can take this and, and see what other doors can open up. And, and I just know the more that you do, the more you put yourself out there. Obviously, I'm banking off my fame and legendary status as a skateboarder. That helps, definitely helps my art get pushed out there. But also, I want the art to speak for itself. I want people to say, hey, that's a great piece of art. And that's what drives me is I want to be the best I can. Actually, kind of skateboarding kind of found me. It was exciting. It was something that, that was very challenging for me. As I progressed, I started winning contests. And then when I got picked up by Stacy Peralta and I started traveling, I knew that this was something that was going to be long term, something that I was going to pursue as a career. I took it seriously, you know, and I didn't mess around and I didn't let this opportunity pass me by. And a few years later, I turned pro in 1980 and I actually started making money at skateboarding at age 15. That's when I knew that uh, I wasn't gonna go to college and I was gonna be a professional skateboarder. So this right here is basically, this tank is a reproduction of my first graphic. And I think there might've been five or six of these made. There's actually a couple photos of me riding this at Upland, and there's a photo of Tony Hawk riding one at Moonet Del Rey in the upper keyhole. But uh, this thing is heavy, and so with a board like this, um, I invented the Caballero with the fake 360 Ollie <laughs> with a board exactly like this. I mean, look at no concave, flat. But yeah, so this was supposed to be my very first graphic, which, because I'm stubborn, <laughs> and Stacy uh, offered this deck to me. Um, I was riding the Ray Bones Rodriguez Skull and Sword and coming from riding that graphic for like two years straight and then getting this as my graphic, I was like, no, <laughs> not happening Stacy. I want something uh, with a little bit more substance, more depth and dimension. And I said, how about a dragon? And he's all, why? why do you want to use a dragon? I go, well, I was born year of the dragon. And I was a huge fan of Bruce Lee. He was always known as the dragon. I just thought that, that would be fitting. And lo and behold, what's interesting is I grew up 
thinking that I was just Mexican and Spanish descent. But it wasn't until I was 35 when my dad passed away, found out that um, I was part Japanese. My grandfather was full Japanese, so that makes me a quarter Japanese. So in turn, it's kind of cool that um, I was still attracted to dragons, which has that Asian background, you know, representation of a Japanese dragon. So yeah, really cool. I used to make this uh, zine back in the day called Speed Zine. It had punk rock in it and I had skateboarding. I had this thing like, you know, submit your art and maybe it'll show up in, in speed zine. And here we go, Andy Howe. I get this letter from Andy Howe and it's a picture of a skeleton doing kind of like a layback. It has the faction on it. I'm like, this is pretty cool. So I ended up putting his art on the cover of one of my speed zine. I actually still have that issue with his original art glued onto a piece of paper. So that's how I met Andy. And then lo and behold, years later, I see that he's on New Deal showcasing his art. And then over the years, I just kept seeing his art grow. At the same time, I was venturing into art and I would see him in like Juxtapost Magazine and becoming like a well-established artist. We just always kept in contact. It's grown from a pen pal to skating with him in competitions to participating in art shows together, you know? And then now working on this project, where I'm actually drawing a graphic based on one of his drawings. So it's like kind of a full circle, you know. <laughs> it's really cool.